I miss California burritos. There's a saying, you don't know what you got till it's gone, and it's so true. So I lived in the Bay Area of California for my final years of high school and most of college before I dropped out. And I don't think I really discovered Mexican food and found an appreciation for it until maybe my early 20s when I was going out and getting drunk every other day and finding myself at Baldo's or Alberto's after the club. I love all things carne asada and I would either order the carne asada nachos or the fries, extra crispy by the way, or the California burrito because it was a lot easier to eat. It wasn't until I moved to Hawaii in 2009 that I discovered good Mexican food isn't sold everywhere. And I'm not saying that all Mexican food in Hawaii is trash, it's just different. It's not the same and it's not California Mexican food. For as long as I've lived in Hawaii, there's been a number of Mexican food spots that would pop up and then disappear, and I was always really excited to try them, hoping that I would get that familiar flavor and bite that I was craving, but it was never the case. That's when I decided I just need to make my own California burritos. I've tried and tweaked so many different recipes that i found online, and honestly, this one ain't it either. (laughs) I mean, it's really delicious, it's great. But I don't know, there's just something about getting it from a fast food spot that I don't think I can replicate. And we can't barbecue at our apartment, so I gotta use a cast iron griddle in our kitchen, and the liquid smoke just ain't the same. Also, as I'm getting older, I'm trying to be a little more health conscious, so I'm not sure if I'm missing out on a lot by air frying the french fries instead of deep frying them. Before I cut into the steak, I just wanted to mention that if you're like me and enjoy cooking and then filming it and then putting it on the internet for people to tell you what you're doing wrong, I can show you how to make better looking and sounding cooking videos. Aside from my recipe content, I post a ton of how-to stuff on my channel and if that sounds like something you're into, consider subscribing. The steak was cooking kind of quick on the stove, so I finished it in a 450 degree oven until it hit an internal temperature of 130 degrees Fahrenheit. This is a medium-ish rare. Just make sure that you cut against the grain. I ended up chopping it all up before I put it into the burrito. I was able to source these large 14 inch tortillas at our local restaurant supply store and I popped it in the microwave for about 30 seconds to soften it up. The burritos I get from Baldo's were always packed and came out like bigger than my arm. So I tried my best to replicate that with the one that I'm making in this video. I made some guacamole the day before and I'll put a link to that one minute recipe video in the description if you want to check it out. I tried my best to fold this burrito and also hide the fact that some of the crispy french fries were poking through the tortilla as I struggled to wrap it. But with the magical power of editing, I can just skip to this final shot here. This burrito came out great, and it's my go-to recipe whenever I need a Mexican food fix. I'd always ask for extra tubs of that green salsa, but today I'm using the OG Truff Hot Sauce. This video isn't sponsored, by the way. And that's how I make a California burrito. That steak is on point. Mmm, fuck, that's so good.